Hi guys, welcome back! Today we'll take a look at another 4 engine oils to find out which is the best. Ever since I started this channel, my knowledge regarding engine oils has grown a lot. Mostly due to your feedback and suggestions, of course, so thank you for that. I mostly choose the oils that I test based on popularity, but because of your recommendations, I discovered some oils that I never heard about. A good example is Ravenol, which to my surprise is one of the best. So, today I decided to test another oil recommended by you. I'm talking about Polytron. Besides this one, we'll also test AMS Oil Signature Series, Repsol Elite and Valvoline Syn Power XL3. We'll first start with a technical data sheet overview of each oil, then we'll perform a lubricity test followed by a cold viscosity test, an evaporation test and finally another cold viscosity test for the heated oil. At the end of the video, we'll compare the results and see which is the best. Let's get started! So Polytron was suggested to me from the very first video I posted, but honestly I never heard anything about it. Apparently it's made in the USA, but according to the packaging this really doesn't look like premium oil, but never judge a book by its cover, you know. <laughs> Everyone was telling me that it's very good, so I started searching for information about it. I was a bit disappointed to see the price, which was around 17 euros per liter plus shipping because nobody has it in stock, the final price would have been around 23 euros, which is more than genuine oil. Besides this, there is no official datasheet for this oil publicly available. Even requesting this information from Polytron, I never got an answer. So, as far as I can tell, this oil was not officially tested by independent organizations. But I may be wrong, who knows. Next is Amsoil, a very popular oil brand in the United States, but in Europe, not so much. The cost for 1 liter is around 13 euros, but being a niche product like Polytron, Availability may be tricky, depending on the region. They also mentioned that it can provide wear protection up to 40,000 km. Well, I wouldn't do that. At least Ordell claims are based on independent testing, unlike Polytron, which doesn't provide any references to something similar. Based on this solid business model, maybe I should be starting selling engine oil. Gabortron, extra virgin monograde oil, precision formulated for colon flush performance. Third is Repsol, manufactured in Europe and originally from Spain, as indicated by the barcode. This has a cost of 7 euros, making it the cheapest product in this comparison. Hopefully, the price doesn't reflect the performance of this oil. And the fourth oil is Valvoline, priced at 8 euros, is the second cheapest oil in this comparison. This is manufactured in the Netherlands, as indicated on the label and the barcode, but originally Valvoline was founded in the United States. So today we have three oils from the United States and one from Spain. <laughs> if we take a look at the datasheet, this contains valuable information regarding the performance of each oil, which is based on official testing results. This information should be the only criteria through which you choose the best oil. For easier reference, I've placed all the data in a table and with explanations for each parameter. However, this data can be understood more clearly through testing and result analysis. Therefore, let's begin with the lubricity test which can show the anti-wear properties of each oil. This homemade testing machine is based on laboratory equipment, designed with this purpose and has the same working principle. By applying the oil sample on a spinning bearing, we can press a static component on it to create friction, just like components inside an engine. And no, lubricated components inside the engine are not under pressure. The oil pressure is something else, and we should discuss this in another video. The parameters and variables for this test are precisely controlled so that we can get reliable results. For example, oil temperature, rotation speed, steel hardness, and so on. But in order to make sure that the results are indeed accurate, I also performed a gauge RNR, which is a quality assurance technique used for validating testing procedures. So Polytron, the incognito oil with little to no online details, mentions on their website that their oil has an extra additive called MCT, which can somehow form a durable microlayer of hard metal on components that is 95% wear resistant. And even if you suddenly have a total oil loss, the engine is temporarily protected. 
Hmm. I think we can test that. I'm not an expert in metallurgy, but as far as I know, claiming that this additive can somehow change the molecular structure of the metal through metallurgical processes is questionable. The only way to make steel more durable is by adding other elements to it, like carbon, chromium or vanadium, in processes known as hardening, which are only possible in high temperature environments, like a furnace. <laughs> if your car becomes a furnace, then you have bigger problems than engine loss, oil loss or whatever. <laughs> so looking at the scar left, Polytron has a mediocre result of 1.539 square millimeters. The watt meter indicated that the drill required 295 watts to spin the bearing. Not a bad result, but definitely not in the top. Ok, now let's see if it really offers protection in case of oil loss. For this, I'll simply remove 100 mm of oil from the tray so that the bearing no longer spins in the oil. And I'll rotate the same roller upside down and repeat the testing cycle once again. Let's call this the oil loss lubricity test. Ok, oil loss lubricity test it is. But before that, I think we need to have a control measurement of what a scar would look like if there was absolutely no oil on it. Bone dry. Metal on metal contact. <laughs> Let's see. Look at that crater, that's a very big scar. So here we have the results for Polytron side by side. Having a constant oil supply, the wear scar is manageable, as seen in the left photo. In the middle photo, the oil was drained, but the parts were still covered in oil. And on the right, the parts were cleaned and degreased. So it's clear that in case of total oil loss, you would still get some protection but a lot less than 95%. I believe that we should do the same with the rest. The arms oil left a scar of 1.292 square millimeters. Here we can see the side by side comparison as before. Next is Repsol, which left a mark of 1.264 square millimeters. To me, it seems like this oil left the smallest scar in the oil loss lubricity test, which indicates that Repsol has a good adhesion to surfaces. And Valvoline left a scar of 1.123 square millimeters, the best result in this comparison. Now for the cold viscosity test, where the oils were left overnight to chill, reaching a temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius. Even if these oils have the same viscosity index, they are not equal. At such low temperatures, the difference between them becomes more noticeable, so we can see which one can lubricate the engine faster. The first is Amsoil and right behind is Polytron, Valvoline is third and Drepsol is in last place. For the next step, the evaporation test, samples from each oil were heated to 185 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. This simulates oil exposure at high temperatures, which can damage the molecular bonds. At these temperatures, oil also evaporates, which can lead to oil loss. The samples were weighted before and after, so we can determine the evaporation loss. Here we have the results. Polytron lost 1.88%, Amsoil lost 1.36%, Repsol lost 1.5% and Valvoline lost 1.13%. And it seems like the cheaper oils are doing better. Let's continue with the final test after which we'll compare the results. It's interesting to note that after being exposed to high temperature, Polytron maintained its color the best, while Amsoil and Repsol got a lot darker. As before, we'll place the heated oils in the freezer overnight to chill at minus 25 degrees Celsius. In this case, it seems like all the oils had the exact results as before, only slower. Now that the tests are over, let's see what conclusions can we take from this. Starting with Polytron, I believe that this oil is overrated. In the lubricity test, it had a mediocre result, drawing the most watts to spin the bearing, indicating that it's not as good as the others at reducing friction, and it had a poor result in the evaporation test, losing 1.88%. The performance it offers is not really that good, and for this price, there are a lot of other brands which are easier to find and cheaper. Usually, I compare my testing results with the official specification from each manufacturer, but in this case, my testing is all we get. On Polytron's website, we cannot find any technical information, only Facebook testimonials. I mean, what is this? Jehovah's Witnesses? 
I don't mean to be disrespectful, but how can a normal person determine if the oil is good or bad? If I wouldn't have this know-how and test equipment available, how can I know that your product is any good? Well, I wouldn't, basically. Look at Volkswagen. Everybody believed that their emissions were good, the data reported by them claimed that their emission was good, but they f***ed up. Maybe this oil is good under different scenarios. Maybe some of its properties were not tested under my setup. Keep in mind that there are a lot of other aspects where oil is a key factor, and my tests are focused on just a few, which I consider to be very important, and in these ones, it's not great. It did have a good result in the cold viscosity test. I think that the rating is required for the products I test. Let's have 5 ratings. Number 1. The 5 stars, the best of the best. Shut up and take my money. Number 4. Uh, almost excellent, but not there yet. 3 stars should be acceptable if it's cheap. 2 stars should be you can do better. And 1 star, the worst, just stay away. So, my rating for Polytron is you can do better. Next is Amsoil, which I consider to be a good oil. Everything is transparent and we can check the datasheet. To me, it seems like a Group 3 base oil, which is not a bad thing. Most OEM requirements can only be achieved by a Group 3 base oil. The viscosity index is pretty high and it has a good TBN, which means that the cleaning performance is good. In my testing, the anti-war properties are again good and better than average. The cold viscosity is the best in this comparison and the evaporation loss is manageable. What I don't like is the availability issues and the price, but this is just a regional problem which all oils may have. The rating for AMS oil is… almost excellent, but not there yet. Now the Spanish oil, Repsol. The anti-wear properties are better than average, as also indicated by the HTHS, and it has a very affordable price at 7 euros per liter. From the earlier experiment, it also seems to have the best result in case of total oil loss, which, as mentioned, can indicate a good adhesion to metal surfaces. However, it came in last place in the cold viscosity test, and it has a relatively low TBN number. The rating for Repsol is acceptable if it's cheap. And it is cheap. <laughs> and last is Valvoline, the second cheapest oil in this comparison. This oil really surprised me with its performance. The datasheet lacks some information like the NOAC test and the HTHS, but according to my testing, this value should be very good. It had the best results in the lubricity test, meaning that the anti-wear properties are great, and it also has the best result in the evaporation test. Furthermore, the viscosity index is 166 making it more stable under temperature fluctuations. In the cold viscosity test, it came third, and there are better overall oils out there like Motul. Therefore, my rating for valve line is… almost excellent, but not there yet. So, that's my opinion regarding these products. I hope that this information was useful to you. If you like it, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. More episodes and tests are coming for all kinds of products. If you wish to support me, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member at the link in the description. All Patreon members have early access to my videos before anyone else. And as the channel grows, more surprises await you. <laughs> you can also follow me on social media where I post updates for projects that I'm working on, but Patreon members receive more information. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye bye. Uff, boh, ai frigeci. Tu te m***i da măi de țânțar de unde ai venit pe frigul ăsta? Am omorât, f***i de Dumnezeu. Ok. Now the Spanish oil, Repsol.